Welcome back to another video with us here at LMD and STEM Academy. In this video, we will be working through the part B, so question three, part B, from the Cape Chemistry Unit 1, Paper 2, from June 2024. And this question was centered on transition elements, right? So it says a transition element ion, X3+, plus, forms a complex with six hydroxide ligands. Define the term ligand. So a ligand is an ion or a molecule with one or more lone pairs of electrons that can be donated to a transition element ion. Okay, so that's what a ligand is. Next, we're being asked to write the formula of the complex formed, right? So here's our transition metal ion. And in this particular instance, our ligand, are the, these are the hydroxide ions, and they told us that, right? We have hydroxide ligands. And so here's what's going to happen now. There are six of them, and we have our transition metal ions. So here's a formula for that complex, okay? So here it is now. We have our transition metal um, here. We just write the metal here. And then we have our hydroxide ligand. There are six of them. We write that in a square bracket. And then what I really want to point out is this charge that we have on the outside, right? Because that's something that you have to be able to get to as well, right? So because the transition element ion itself had a charge of plus three, right? And the hydroxide ion itself has a charge of minus one. And there are six of them, right? When you add those two things together, what are we adding? We're effectively adding plus three minus six, and that will give us minus three. And so that's how we know what the charge on the complex ion should be. Very, very important. So don't overlook that part. That's very important, okay? So this is the charge on the complex ion, and these are the species that make up that complex ion, okay? All right. So let's move on now. So part three says we're supposed to state the shape of the complex ion formed, right? So here's a complex ion. It has six ligands in it, right? So the key thing is we're always looking for how many ligands, right, are bonded to that um, central atom. How many ligands do we have there? And because we have six, <clears throat> that's going to form a octahedral shape, okay? You have six ligands, six coordinate bonds. You're going to get a octahedral shape. All right, so let's go ahead now. So it says, using a suitable diagram, illustrate your answer in B part three. So we're going to have to just do a quick sketch of that octahedral complex. So here's what we came up with here, right? So here I have my transition element, my transition metal in the middle. And I have my six hydroxide ligands surrounding it. And remember earlier what we said ligands do, we said that they're going to donate a lone pair to the transition element ion. So you see that we have, we draw an arrow coming from each of the <clears throat> hydroxide ligands, specifically from the oxygen, because that's where the lone pair would be. And so we draw arrows pointing from the oxygen to that central metal ion, transition metal ion. So I have six arrows pointing inward, and then I just kind of trace the shape around that. And that's how I would depict my octahedral complex. Okay, so that's how we illustrate that answer for two marks. Okay, so let's go ahead now. The other part of this question says, state what is meant by the term coordination number in reference to a complex ion. We hinted at this a little bit earlier. So coordination number refers to the number of coordinate bonds that a ligand forms with the central transition metal ion. The number of coordinate bonds. Remember, no, you know, that's why we show these arrows pointing towards it because it's, it is forming coordinate bonds, dative coordinate bonds with the metal ion. And in fact, there are six of them here. One, two, three, four, five, six. And so the coordination number would be six because there are six coordinate bonds 
that the ligand forms with the central transition metal ion, okay? Okay, so let's go ahead now. So three part C says, state the expected observation for the addition of concentrated hydrochloric acid to aqueous copper two sulfate. So what do we expect to see, right? So really what's going on here is a ligand exchange. It's a ligand exchange reaction that, that's going on here. And importantly, I want to point out that because we said aqueous copper sulfate, we're actually you know, thinking, right? That we're starting with a copper complex. So it would be the copper, right? It would be this particular complex that we are starting out with. Why? Why, guys? Because it's aqueous copper two sulfate, and that's how it exists when it's in that um hydrated aqueous form. So keep that in mind. And so to that, what are we going to do? We're going to be adding HCl, right? So they're saying, okay, when you do that, what do you expect to see? All right? So here it is now. So the solution will change from blue to green, then yellow. The chloride ions gradually replace the aqua ligands or the water ligands to form a yellow solution of copper chloride, right? Right? So that's what's going to be formed there. This complex is going to be formed as a result of that ligand exchange. And so this particular complex is yellow in color, right? The copper sulfate in the water would have been blue. And then when we're at this intermediate color of green, it's when we're not fully, we haven't fully replaced all the water. So if you notice, it's a mixture of the blue and the yellow while you would see green, right? But once all of the ligands have been exchanged out, you're going to see yellow. So the answer here that we're looking for is really that the solution will go from blue to green, then yellow. Done. Okay? So the other part says, write an equation for the reaction which occurs and identify the species with the higher case tab or stability constant value. So now we're going to have to write an equation that describes this change that we would see. And so here's the equation for that. As I said earlier, because we have aqueous copper two sulfate, we're going to show it right in this hexaqua um, copper two complex. So that, that's this one here. So we show this right? That's aqueous copper two sulfate. We're going to throw in the hydrochloric acid. So we're going to show just the chloride ions because it's a net ionic equation. And remember now it's an equilibrium that gets set up and we form this um, copper chloride complex here, right? So that's what we have here. So this is tetrachloracuprate two, right? That would be the name of this complex. So we form that. And then, of course, the water that would have gotten displaced out of the copper complex is going to be seen here, right? And so what did we say earlier? This was blue originally, and then we ended up being yellow once the copper ligands come in and kick out the water or the aqua ligands, okay? And so if we're supposed to identify the species with the highest stability constant, what the stability constant is saying basically which one of these ligands prevail? The one with the highest stability constant is the one that prevailed, that, that made the equilibrium shift in this direction, that caused us to see the color change. And so in that sense, then, the stability constant of the chloride ion is larger than that of the water, right? And so in this particular instance, the species with the higher case tab will be the chloride ions because they came in and they kicked out the water ligands to form the, this complex here, okay? And because we see the yellow color, we know that the copper, that, that the chloride ions have the higher case tab value, okay? All right, so let's go ahead now. Three part D. Three part D says acidified potassium manganate seven solution is a strong oxidizing agent. It can be used in a redox titration to determine the concentration of Fe2 plus in iron tablets. Describe the changes which occur at the end point of the titration, right? So as it relates to the titration, now we are titrating the iron solution with the acidified potassium manganate, right? 
And so what we would see is we would see a color change of the solution. That's your iron solution that you'd have in your conical flask. That's going to change from light green to reddish brown. Okay? So that's the color change that we would see at the end point of the titration. We would see a reddish brown color. Right? So now we're being asked to write the formula and state the color of the species form from the oxidation of Fe2 plus ion. Right? If we are oxidizing the Fe2 plus ions, that means that we're forming Fe3 plus ions, and those are the ones that are reddish brown. Fe2 plus is light green, and Fe3 plus is reddish brown. Okay? So that's why we would see that reddish brown color at the end point when oxidation has been completed by using this powerful, strong oxidizing agent. Okay? And so with that, we've come to the end of this question. Definitely give this video a like. Subscribe to the channel, and if you look on the left here, you'll see the next video up. And if you look on the right, you will see our module three playlist where you'll find tons more interesting content that will be helpful in getting you ready for this exam, okay? So thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.